Okay, this is Physics Girl, and I am Roger, Mudfoss University, and I need your help, Physics Girl. I need you to help me. Now, here's what she's going to say, and I disagree with this. And this is not her research. This is mainstream research, and that is what I disagree with. Now, here's what she's going to say. We've peered down into a quark as far as 10 to the minus 19 meters, and we've seen nothing. No indication of smaller components. The same is true of electrons and neutrinos. These are all elementary particles, and as far as we've been able to measure, they are as small as it gets. Is all right, now they still feel this, and it is not correct, and I'm going to show you right now, and I can back up every single statement I make with actual physical proof. I can prove every word I'm saying. This is light from a red laser. It's light. Nothing more than light. This is that same light. Now it's being, the particle beam is here, it's being stretched and elongated, accelerated, forced through a venturi. All the particles in the air are being excited as a result of this tremendous energetic interaction. You can see the reverse magnetic fields created all over the place. This is the cherry and cough radiation this is the interference pattern created because they're all negative particles they're all electrons which are light they are particles not waves they have a mass they're not massless when they crash together forcing each other to invade each other's regions they turn into a plasma which is here it steps down as it expands out they all force each other into these patterns the ones on the edges are allowed to just split the way they want because there's nobody girdling them in these are all set up as lines most are pushed to the center because it's pushing this way and pushing this way and most enter the center that creates the interference pattern. Now let's see what happens on the other side of this interference pattern when this particle beam, which is bosons, crash into unrestricted space. They're restricted here, forced into each other's regions. Now they're allowed to recoup their own normal dimensions in space. However, they first have to crash through the barrier. And that's what we're going to watch now. This is the other side of the Venturi. These are the boson particles. This is the crash into the, into the space that is unrestricted, and now it's going to step down and become normal, normal light. It's accelerated here to Cheryankov, and the light is accelerated. I don't care what you say. That was light when it came in. Light when it came out, and it's an accelerated high-energy state. It's now crashed into the ether. These little dots that surround all of these particle beams, what is in here is a charged particle carrier, the tiniest little dot in the center, which is the electron, which is negative particle spinning through space fast as hell, creating a field surrounding it because its magnetic interference does this exactly like it does in a wire. Same exact pattern. Now, this one here is the white one that is has spun backwards. That one there is going to create its own little particle when it steps into one of these fields and steps down into a smaller field. So what it, this, this is the result of light. These disks are light particles. I don't care what anybody says. It went in here as light, it came out of here as light, and it is being polarized around a light particle which is a negative electron spinning through space and I have pictures of them spinning and I have pictures of the actual electron I believe that one there came backwards spinning backwards through the accelerator and it has no magnetic field exactly like Venus no magnetic field extreme energy and and extremely powerful and when it crashed into one of these other fields it stepped down into a partial field. I'll show you that. Now it's quite obvious that these are the fields. That was that white particle stepped down crashing into another field creating a partial field. That's what I'm seeing. And nobody can say they don't see that. So this has to be taken serious. It came through the accelerator as light. 
it came through as creative bosons after the Cheryenkov. It created the field surrounding the boson particle, absolutely as expected. This one here showed no field and high energy, indicating a reverse spin. It creates a new field as it interacts with this field and gives off a portion of a field. Explain that. This is with the blue laser, same sort of thing. Each one of these is a particle. This one is highly ex uh, um, excited, spinning to the right, drifting to the left, expanded at the bottom, compressed at the top. It will eventually create Higgs fields as soon as it breaks out of its chaos. This is the green laser coming through and coming through the Venturi creating this shower of electrons. These are the particles. We believe they're the particles. And we've seen them in many different places. They only display for two, two, for two uh, frequency cycles, I believe. That's what we've seen. I'll show you that in another one. All right, this is the Venturi accelerator. It comes out of here in this glowy Cheryenkov radiation, totally in chaos. They step down and they display these two particles, it appears to be particles, for two waves and then they go into this. So that's all I can say. I believe they are the actual particles. There's that electron. I mean, I'm thinking that's an electron. I'm looking at a torus here. And then spikes coming out here where the neck of the torus would be. What I'm seeing, I don't know if it's right or not, but it's possibly capacitive and inductive reactants where the, the body of the torus is the capacitance that can hold whatever energy is there, expansion energy. The neck is the inductance, so it, when it tries to force through the neck, it says nope, and it creates a reverse field that can oppose it by up to 10 times the incoming field. And then it pops back into the expansion of the cavity, tries to go back through the neck, and it bounces it back and forth. I have no I have no way of understanding how these things maintain a continuous ability to, to control a region by having a particle within that region. There's some energy force that's in there and I see capacitive inductive reactants. That's the only thing I can take away from that. And that it would do exactly this. You can see actually the spikes, the dark and the white spikes, the dark and the white spike dark and white bloop, 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 bloop. that's what I'm seeing because yeah sometimes they're on this side sometimes they're on that side they are always on the same plane the axis that is the axis to the earth I believe these are magnetic particles the earth is a magnetic body that is what I believe is going on there. so I'm gonna leave it at this this is the um, video I did about cold fusion using a venturi it's called free energy cold fusion using Venturi and I'm asking for someone in the academic experimental um, business world even there's a huge 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 market for this there's money to be made if people want to make money somebody's got to step up and save the earth I don't care about the money I gotta be honest with you. there's no interest whatsoever for me uh, but somebody needs to do this because there's more at, at stake than money but I know that's the driver for everything so there will be money so somebody do something please